Topping off our morning rush, the man who shot and killed the UNM baseball player is found guilty of first degree murder. He could face life in prison. Yesterday, the jury found Darian Bashir guilty for the death of Jackson Weller right outside of a Knob Hill bar. Bashir's attorney tells us it's too soon to know if they will appeal. He's set to be sentenced in January. Pfizer's vaccine for children ages 5 to 11 has been approved for nearly two weeks now. now in that time, fewer than 1% of New Mexico's children have received their first shot. That comes out to about 1,000 kids. The state says that they will soon be making a push using TV ads to encourage parents to vaccinate their children. Pfizer is asking the FDA to authorize booster shots for all adults 18 years and older. Right now, only at-risk Americans can get a booster shot. The company says new data from a large clinical trial showed there were only five cases of COVID-19 in those who got the booster compared to 109 cases in those who had not. Erica. Here's a look at the school day forecast. Temperatures are in the upper 40s this morning, so wear the layers and we're not going to be as warm this afternoon. High temperatures only making it into those low 60s, so you'll want to keep the fall layers around. Police say that a seven year old boy is still in critical condition this morning after being hit by a car in southeast Albuquerque. The boy was hit on lead near Carlisle yesterday evening. Officers say that the boy was on the sidewalk and then darted into traffic where he was hit. He was then taken to UNM Hospital. An Española mother and her boyfriend are facing charges this morning after a car crash that left a five year old girl seriously injured. Kristen Velez Vasquez and Adeline Mengura are facing charges of child abuse resulting in great bodily harm. The couple told Santa Fe County deputies they had been drinking at the home in Española before they got in that crash. A Vietnamese restaurant owner is now scrambling to find cash to repay tips for employees after their safe was stolen. A, th a thief is seen on camera breaking into the restaurant at Green Jeans at, at about 5.30 in the morning, stealing a small safe. Now, the owner says that they hope to reimburse their employees. Erica. And here's a look at the morning commute hazards. We do have some dense fog in Hobbs and in southern Lee County. That fog really stops once you go into Chavez and Eddy counties, so it's just going to be in that southern Lee County area that you'll have to deal with that for the morning commute. There also may be some snowy roads up in the San Juan Mountains of southern Colorado, so use caution there. The public will now be able to weigh in on pr pr proposed zoning changes relating to cannabis sales in Bernalillo County. Bernalillo County's zoning code amendment would not allow it a dispensary within 300 feet of a school or daycare. It also prohibits use in public spaces. Happening today, Project Child Safe Albuquerque will launch with the hopes of encouraging people to safely store their guns. Gun owners will be able to get free gun locks and other information about gun safety. This follows the Washington Middle School shooting in August. Emergency SNAP benefits for New Mexicans are now being extended this month. Households receiving SNAP food benefits will receive the maximum amount for their household size on November 14th. Recipients do not have to do anything to receive the additional food benefits. Instead, they'll be directly distributed to their EBT cards. Erica. All right, let's get a check on that morning drive. Here's a look at the maps. We do have a minor slowdown east on I-40 near 6th Street. And here's a check on Tracker. We're going west on I-40 near University, where things are moving right along. An 83-year-old man breaking an amazing feat, becoming the oldest person ever to hike the Appalachian Trail. MJ Sonny Eberhardt began the hike back in February at his home in Flag Mountain, Alabama. A representative for the Appalachian Trail Conservancy confirmed that Eberhardt broke the record. Welcome back. On this day in 1995, high winds developed over northern New Mexico, and there was damage to buildings, trees, and cars were reported uh, because of gusts up to 61 miles per hour. And that was one of our highest gusts at the Las Vegas airport. Now today we are going to be seeing some of those strong winds as well, but not that high. I'll have a check on that in just a second in the five facts. All right, at number five, students at Albuquerque's Lava Land Elementary will be rocking some new shoes soon. Teachers handed out vouchers for a pair of shoes along with a care bag. The families get to pick out their child's new shoes themselves as all part of our latest Kirky Cares campaign. Lava Land's principal says the kids were excited to get the new shoes. They also add the donation is a big help for kids and their families. At number four this morning, over $3.5 billion will be sent to New Mexico as part of President Biden's infrastructure bill. Any specific projects have yet to be announced. The Department of Transportation has a list of priorities, including new interchanges at I-25 in Montgomery and at Gibson. The bill will also help pay for clean energy projects like cleaning up old mines and wells. President Biden should sign that bill into law sometime this week. And at number three, it is going to be a windier day, so we'll have a wind advisory for the central highlands, downslope of the Sandia Manzano Mountains, where gusts will be up to 50 miles per hour. 
And number two, Pfizer's vaccine for children ages 5 to 11 has been approved for nearly two weeks now. Now, in that time, fewer than 1% of New Mexico's kids have received their first shot. However, the state says that they'll soon be making a push, encouraging parents to vaccinate their children. Kids 5 to 11 have uh, received one third of the standard dose of the vaccine given to adults. Finally, number one, it's on to the sentencing phase for the man who shot and killed a UNM baseball player. Darian Bashir was found guilty yesterday of first degree murder and the death of Jackson Weller outside of a Knob Hill bar. Bashir was also found guilty of tampering with evidence for taking off after the shooting, then asking his girlfriend to hide the license plate of the car that was involved. Bashir is set to be sentenced in January. He's facing life behind bars for this murder. Bashir's attorney tells us it's too soon to know if they plan to appeal.